Well, an investigation by the Daily Caller has revealed that a high-profile anti-Muslim hate crime in Milwaukee is apparently anything but a hate crime. On April 10th of this year, a 58-year-old woman was attacked while leaving a prayer service at the Islamic Society of Milwaukee. Even though police didn't immediately make an arrest in the case, and still haven't, in fact, it was immediately denounced as a hate crime by at least one local official, as well as many pro-Muslim organizations, including, of course, the Council on American-Islamic Relations, which vocally denounced the Trump administration's failure to respond to the attack. You've seen this story before. But according to the actual police report, which apparently nobody bothered to read, the victim of the attack repeatedly denied it was a hate crime. Instead, she believed the attack was related to the behavior of her, of her daughter, who recently left her husband to enter a relationship with another woman. The woman disapproves of her daughter's same-sex relationship and believed this disapproval may have somehow provoked the attack. It's complex, but it's not what it was represented as. Now, there have been a lot of bogus hate crimes since last fall's election, a lot, and we've covered several of them. But this is a new low. Activist groups with an agenda making up a hate crime even as the supposed victim actively denies it is a hate crime. Raheel Raza is a Muslim woman. She supports President Trump's recently preserved travel ban, and she joins us now. Um, thanks a lot for joining us. So first to, to, the, to the hate crime question, it does seem like there was this spate of hate crimes reported in the media against American Muslims, and to the extent that we have looked into any of them, some perhaps are real, some are not real, but it does seem like there's a political agenda behind the reporting of these so-called crimes. Have you noticed this? Yes, I have noticed that. Of course, any time there is a hate crime against any group, we have to speak out because that is definitely not acceptable. Racism yes. and bigotry is unacceptable. However, in this particular case, the victim consistently said that this was not based on her religion and it was a personal issue, as you mentioned about with her daughter. But yes. organizations like CARE, who uh, we know love to play the victim card, uh, they love to promote the idea that there is rampant Islamophobia and that Muslims are being bashed on the streets of the United States. That's another extreme. We have to, of course, speak out when there is hate, but when there is, that is not the intention, and when that is not the true cause, then we have to be very cautious of the kind of messaging that they are putting across. Yeah, lying is always bad, and in the service of politics, it's it ominous. Is. Yeah. So um, you've been a, a rare voice um, as a Muslim in support or maybe qualified support of the so-called travel ban the administration uh, has put through. Why? Well, I call it a moratorium, which is a temporary stoppage, because... Yes. Five of the countries which I mentioned are failed states. Iran, of course, is an issue by itself, has been at perpetual war with the United States. But the other five are failed states. They have internal conflicts, radicalization, radicalization jihadism, and they could combust at any moment. So they are a threat. And as a precautionary measure, it makes sense to stop immigration temporarily from those countries until the national security of the country can be sorted out. And it is in the longer, large-term large interest of national security to actually implement this um, moratorium. It seems like, I, I don't even understand this argument, but tell me if you've heard it and perhaps you can explain it. People are saying on the left that this temporary travel ban would somehow make this country more dangerous, would imperil us more. Do you believe there is any merit to that argument? No, I don't. I mean, these are all, you know, those people who have knee-jerk reactions. It is being done to actually strengthen the national security of the country because we only have to look back at this past year and see the number of attacks that have taken place. So obviously there is a problem out there of radical Islamist terrorism, right. and it has to be addressed. And especially those people who say that this is about religion, it's not. I'm a practicing observant Sunni Muslim. For me, this is about region and not religion. And I support the ban because it sends a very strong message to those countries who want to ship their terrorists to the West and have them do destruction here. So really quickly, why, I mean, why would people attack this ban so vehemently? I mean, you see many people on the left legitimately exercise, upset, emotional about it. Why? Yes, I know because well, because they have an emotional reaction against the man, not against the vision and against the office of the president of the United States, who has every right to implement policies that are for the betterment of the country and the people of America, which includes Muslims. 
So they have to be more sensible instead of having these emotional knee-jerk reactions, exactly as you said. So this, no matter what he says or does, there is going to be this emotional reaction. But we need to take a step back. We need to think reasonably and logically and understand yes. that this is for our benefit. Boy, you, you must get into some pretty intense exchanges at dinner parties. I wish I, I, wish I was there. Raheel, thank you very much for that. I wish you were a fly on the wall. You would love it. <laughs> I think I would. Thanks for joining us tonight. My pleasure. Thank you.